For this video, we're going to look at a very interesting theorem, often used with polynomials and their zeros. This is known as the boundedness theorem. And the information that it essentially gives us is how big our zeros are. So sometimes it gives us an upper bound or a lower bound for those zeros. Let's take a look at this theorem, see if we can pick it apart. According to the boundedness theorem, uh, we want f to be a polynomial with the degree 1 or larger. We want it to have real coefficients, and we want it to have a positive leading coefficient. Now once we have that polynomial, we're going to divide it by x minus c. And we're going to divide it using synthetic division. So you can imagine a setup much like this. So we have our polynomial, that first term is positive, we're dividing by c, and we're going to have a bunch of numbers left over on the bottom after going through the synthetic division process. Now by looking at the bottom row, and uh, depending on what value of c we used, we can figure out lots of information. Here's what the theorem tells us. If the value of c was greater than 0, and all the numbers in the bottom are positive or 0, then we know that c, that thing that we're dividing by, is an upper bound for all the zeros on f. Now that means that there are no more zeros larger than the one we just tested. c is, uh, you know, there's nothing larger than that one. Now, if c, the thing that we're dividing by, is less than 0, and all the numbers in the bottom alternate, going positive, negative, positive, negative, uh, then we say that c is a lower bound of the zeros on f. And sometimes you might end with uh, zeros in the bottom as well. Uh, you can count those as either positive or negative. Uh, that way you still get this alternating pattern. But again, the thing that it really tells us is that, uh, you know, whatever we were dividing it by, that there's no zeros less than that number. Let's go over two examples so you can see how this works out in practice, and you can tell that this theorem is actually not so bad. So I want to use this theorem to show that x to the fourth minus x cubed plus 3x squared minus 8x plus 8 has no zeros greater than 2. So according to the setup, I want to take 2 into my synthetic division. Let's grab that synthetic division bar. We'll write out all of our terms of our polynomial. So I have 1x to the fourth. I have a negative 1x cubed, 3x squared, minus 8x, and then an 8. Awesome. All right. So here's some things that we want to check out. Looks like all of the coefficients in here are real. That is awesome. And the first one is positive. Great. So it looks like I might be able to use this theorem. Let's do the synthetic division to see what we get in the bottom row. So I bring down my first number, 1. I multiply. Then I add. Multiply. Add. Multiply. Add. Multiply and add. Awesome. So look at that bottom row and notice how all of these guys are positive. Now more importantly, the value that we were testing, the, the 2, is also greater than 0. So what this says, according to the theorem, is that if this polynomial does have real zeros, none of them are greater than 2. So they might be less than 2, but definitely not greater than 2. Let's do one more example so we can see the other half of this theorem, okay? For this one, we want to show that x to the fourth plus x cubed minus x squared plus 3 has no real zeros less than a negative 2. All right, so let's get our setup. So we have our division bar. testing out a negative 2, and we'll write the coefficients of our polynomial. So 1x to the fourth, 1x cubed, minus 1x squared, no x's, and a 3. All right, now let's do this synthetic division. So we bring down our first term, then we multiply. Add, multiply. Add, multiply, add, multiply, and add. Awesome. 
So in this case, uh, the negative 2, the thing that we're testing out, was negative. And look at that last row. The numbers alternate. They go positive, negative, positive, negative, positive. So what this is telling me, according to the theorem, is that there are no zeros less than a negative 2. Now, you can imagine combining this with a, a few other theorems, say the rational roots theorem, and this will allow you to knock off a few of those possible things on your list. But make sure you have all of the key components to make sure that you can use the theorem. You want to make sure that your coefficients are real, the leading term of your polynomial is positive, and then double check whether you're using a positive or a negative value here to see what the bottom row should look like. And that's how you use the boundedness theorem.